It's amazing to be a beer vendor. The splendor, the spoils, the riches. The thing is my wage depends what your tip is. Bitches. <laughs> it's black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. On today's Crave, it's a Crave day. A little nice barbecue day, super simple. A couple little prep items to do, but we're having mild schmokes. So these are some nice European style, three big boy smokies. We got these nice Italian Milano buns. They look amazing. Cut up some onion. We got some relish I've never tried before. Hot dog relish. I'm interested to see how it is. Some prepared bacon pieces. Don't judge me. A couple sauces. And we'll cut up some pickles. A couple of prep tasks. Then we're out to the barbecue. Then we're eating this quick one. But it's a delicious one. And I've been craving it all week. Okay, let's go. First things first, a little smoky prep. You guys know that I like to put some slices in them so they kind of open up and you get those crispy edges when they're on the uh, BBQ. So I just usually do them like this, not too, too deep, but just a few slices so they kind of open up on the Q, get crispy, and kind of when you bite them, it kind of helps them to come apart a little bit. I feel like in sections. All right, easy peasy, ready to go. Of course, on a sausage, I feel like we definitely gotta have a little bit of onion. Tiny little bit of onion. Not a tonion. Just a little bit of onion. Just a little bit of fine diced on. Just further break down a couple slices of pickle. I like my pickles to be small, sprinkled, and uniform on my dogs and sausages you guys know i'm anal retentive about things like this but i just like the way that it happens to enter the mouth when you're eating and lastly we're gonna grill these buns i just found these today they're looking really really perfect pretty stoked on them but they need just a little bit of oil on them evenly spread but we are gonna grill these along with the sausages so i just want to get a nice even spread of everything so that they get crispy maybe take a little brush action to them Get the oil everywhere it needs to be. All right, case closed, let's go out to the grill. All right, time to get these beauties on the grizzle right here. One, two, three on. Close the top, let those do their thing for a little bit. All right, these bad boys are looking crispy and done to me, that's how I like it. Nice and crispy, there we go. Over here is back to our original tray. And then we gotta toast up these buns. Quick little bun toast with the residual. All right, here we are, perfectly grilled buns. Just a nice little, nice little crisp on them. Okay, so let's go and build these up, each in their own unique way. First things first, we're gonna go with the hot dog relish I've never tried. Very much intrigued to see how this stuff tastes. It kind of looks like a, a mustard pickle blend. I don't know if it's sweet or tangy or what, but we are going to find out. That's for one thing for sure. So a little relish, little sprinkle of onion. Next up. Kind of like a classic, but a dumbed down version on the channel. Just a simple kind of Canadian style one that I like to make. We all know this, but that's going to be ketchup. I'm really just wanting ketchup on this one. I was thinking about mayo, but I don't know. Decided against it. We got bacon bits. And lastly, we got onions. And finally, we're gonna do a mayo, mustard, our diced up pickles. More of a classic ballparkish type dog. And that'll be that for that one. All right, yo, coming hot off the grill. We are in the Garden of Zen. We are outside. It's beautiful. We got some nice snossages, is what we used to call them in our family. Snossages or smokies. Um, delicious. 
super excited to eat them and uh, tell you a little bit of a story today actually because while I was making these I was reminiscing on it just felt very ballpark to me just like summer buys ballpark and I worked for the Blue Jays at the Blue Jays for seven years see some of you guys might know that so I kind of want to elaborate on um, just the getting of the job and a funny little story like at the beginning of the job and my like nerdy clown ass singer songwriter rapper's mind and shit so anyways it all goes hand in hand but uh, what else goes hand in hand is these two right here ice and mountain dew zero sugar they just came out with brand spanking new and honestly it is clutch i'm loving it it is delicious and i'm ready to crack into a nice cool bevy however i do think more appropriately for this would be a nice cold tall can but you know that your boy isn't really about that beer life uh, we got them already <laughs> it's a flight path kind of day but anyways we got mountain dew i don't really like beer it's not my jam but i used to sell it part-time for a pretty great side hustle living anyways we'll get into that but right now we gotta you know pucker up Man, Mountain Dew is high key, low key, a secret banger that I kind of always forget about. And then I have it and I'm like, two guns. But uh, let's get into a bite and then uh, get into the story here. I want to try this hot dog relish one off the tippy top because I never tried this hot dog relish before sure it's a pretty common thing but hasn't been in my world okay these buns I wish they had like backing to them like I wish they were able to stay connected but they're like open back but anyways we'll get it worked out I feel like these are just kind of in my way let's go Excuse me, I'm just going to move these. I feel like they're just kind of annoying in the way. I need my crouching room. Man, that's a good-ass bun. I'm really happy with that bun. And I've never had these Smokies before. I usually get Schneiders, but these were like a local joint. And they're great. Big boys, though. Honestly, kind of hard to get a uh, full bite with how big they are. Mm -hmm. It's like a summer meal, it feels like. It just feels very, very uh, cottage, very camp to me. Okay, so I was a beer slinger at the Blue Jays game for seven years, and I'm still technically employed with them. Um, and I do plan in the future when things go back to normal because they've been closed down for two years now to make it back down and like moonlight as a torontonian for like a couple months and like probably work that job and do food content stay like in an airbnb and shit but not live there but still go work that job and like live in Toronto for like the the prime months, July, August, maybe June, July, August. It's a plan. I've been making it a plan for a long time now. Anyways. I found that job out of complete desperation from cook, uh, from quitting my only cooking job at Eastside Mario's when I walked in, and I got online five minutes late and just this prick who used to run the line was getting on me for being five minutes late. And I was just was like, I just quit on the spot. And I'd been working there for a long time. I 
and now I've been absolutely fucking horrifically hating it. So I just pull, I full on quit right in the moment. And sometimes in life, like when you just pull the cord on, on like a quit, you just have to do it because it like puts your back against the wall and you have to find something different. It forces change and like good things come from having like not having the fear of the quit. So walked off the job, get home. I'm on Craigslist looking for shit. And there's like a uh, beer guy for Blue Jays like in there. And I click in and it's like sell beer in the stands for Blue Jays. Um, season starting or no, I think I, I got hired, I think mid early mid season. So June, they start usually at, in early April. So I apply, I get it, I get a call back to come in for an interview. Go in for the interview, the guy in the interview me. This stocky little Asian dude, probably in his mid to late thirties. And just the interview was super simple. Like he basically looked at me and was like, you have the body type to work this job, essentially. He was like, you're a large, like, man, like, you you know, six foot tall, around, at the time, I was probably about 200 pounds. And he's like, really, all it takes is basic math and carrying shit up and down stairs. So, you're hired. So I'm like, sweet. So he's like, we're going to have a training day next week and then we're throwing you into the thing, but it's just, it's a quick one day training and then you're, you're in, you're, you're working. Okay. We're coming in hot next with the simple kind of Canadian Canuck dog. I like to kind of refer to it as. So anyways, I go in for this training, right? And it's just a bunch of dudes. I think there was like one girl, two girls and we're in the Rogers Center, uh, empty stadium, and they kind of like, they brought like a couple bags, like beer bags, and they just like kind of showed us the bag, and uh, and then they were like, so basically, we're just gonna do test runs up and down the aisle. <laughs> so we're I'm in the the empty uh, Rogers Center, and just each of us had to go down individually and like showcase like how you would entice someone into buying beer or just like how you're going to sell this beer basically. To be a salesman. But also the dude showed us like the tactic of how you're going to walk like you don't want to go too fast you want to be like methodical you want to kind of like go up a few hang around a bit kind of crouch down because he's like you're gonna to have to crouch a lot and like things like that so he's kind of showing us just these basic beer vendor tips but because he's worked there for a long time he's like He's like, you know, people come up with like slogans and catchphrases and just ways to be loud, to be heard, to, to sell beer. And he's like t telling us about this old legend that was like, he used to just yell like, but in such a, people used to love this guy. He would like do, uh, people would wait for this guy because he used to just yell like, ice, call, <laughs> beer, like WrestleMania styles. And he's like, this dude was always the highest earning beer vendor. So it, like, it helps to have a personality essentially, right? So we get done the training, we get our uniform and shit. And then 
look at our schedule. And I go home and my like rapper's mind, I'm like, I'm gonna come up with like kind of like a jingle, but more than a jingle, almost like a like a super short, like <laughs> almost like a slam poetry style thing. Like just me saying something out loud. I don't know how to explain it. It's not rapping, but it's not, it's something, but it's not that rhythmic or whatever, but it, yeah, anyways, but I'll tell you it right here. <laughs> and it went like this. It went, uh, <laughs> if you're a true fan, grab a huge can of this cold and freezing, totally pleasing, bold and bubbly brew. Oh, it's no trouble for you. Rain or the heat, we bring it straight to your seat. It's amazing to be a beer vendor. The splendor, the spoils, the riches. The thing is, my wage depends what your tip is. Bitches. <laughs> oh, man. I didn't say bitches. Of course, I thought it in my head. Because you always want the tip. And some people don't. And you're working for, like, not much money. And the point of the, the, the culture of, of the selling of the beer is to... You're paying for convenience. So to not get up, shimmy down the road, bother everybody, have to walk up, wait in line, take a, like, you know what I mean? So that's what the tip's for. And I was always happy to, to, to take a dollar, two bucks, never expected any more. Of course, people were always generous. Like there were people who were generous, but most usually it's a buck or two, which is fine because you could make a lot of money making a buck or two selling like you know, 600 beers, thousand beers in, 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 in a shift. So it was good in that sense. So anyways, I go to my first shift And it was a busy, like, Saturday of, like, a good team. Like, New York was there. And by the time I walked out of my, my beer, my kitchen for where you get your supply, I was already swarmed by, like, four dudes. And so I'm all rookie. Like, I'm just, like you, there's prices, and, and each beer is a different price, so you have to kind of do the math quick in your head. And then you have to get people change quick and shit. And uh, people are just breathing down your throat real quick. And I was just so... I was like, I was like, you know, a little nervous or whatever. And I get swarmed in the hall immediately. And then, uh, I just fumble change and shit. And I eventually get to the aisle and, uh, I worked that shift and I, I wouldn't say my thing. I was just being a little bitch. And then, so the beer sold itself, of course it always does. But when you needed your slogan was on kind of more dead nights. When you needed to make sales when it was slow and to get people to like you and want to buy a tip from you. Because some people at the game, it always used to happen. You get a section and like certain pockets of people just like you better than other vendors. It's just the case. And they like swear to buy off you every time and they do and they tip you nice. Because they like you, they like your energy, they like your vibe, they like they just like you for some reason. So you get those people. And uh, so eventually down the line in the job, I just put my embarrassment on the back burner and just like tried, tried to own that shit. And it got me sales, man. It got me like laughs. And people are like, man, that was really fucking clever. Like, how'd you write, like, how'd you make that? I'm like, I'm a wannabe rapper, like, that's what I moved here for. <laughs> I, I make music and shit. Um, so it worked. But I didn't use it all the time, because the fact of the matter is, is when, the, when it was busy, the beer sells itself. You don't even stand a fucking chance. You literally have people fighting over you to get to you. Same with that concerts. It's just a feeding frenzy. And you got to learn your rhythm. You got to get fast. 
at uh, you you start to get to no combination. So it's like a Stella is 1350 and a Bud is 1150 and then you start to understand like cuz most people in order them in pockets be like four dudes and each dude will get like two guys will get Buds and two guys will get Stellas. So you already know what the what a 2 and 2 into a four like is you're like 56 50 like you just know it like you have to get so quick with your with your combos and shit but yeah that was like a that was a very fun job very chaotic and i but i just wanted to tell you that little that little thing that i wrote <laughs> um and also the funny thing is the dude that hired me eventually there was a whole uh, like scam they had running in the building where everybody was skimming from the beer and this guy was like uh, said to have stolen over the years like upwards of a million dollars so he this is the last one this is more like a maybe closer to a standard ballpark dog I there's no way I'll be able to eat this whole thing um and i'm sorry if you're bothered by i just i'm in the i guess i'm in, in the mood to talk today <laughs> and uh so i'm i'm r rambling a lot well not rambling telling you a story but um yeah he uh he obviously got like rem removed from his position and then he was like supposed to go to court and shit but he somehow got off and they did like they didn't do anything about it because like i guess they couldn't really prove a lot of it but from the top down like so many people were in on it apparently like everybody was getting paid off he was just like the head honcho of it but yeah in the golden years that shit was money, a cash grab. I remember I went to a Jay-Z concert and made $750 in two hours <laughs> in just tips. I walked out of there, I was just like, I am going out tonight. And coincidentally, you might've heard this already, but that was the same night I ended up <laughs> unknowingly hooking up with a co-worker from the baseball game sister and then later on found out like down the line well or no i found out the night i hooked up because it anyways doesn't matter just another funny tale but i've told that story on here before but that shit was wild the bat when i was there for the bat flip year when they almost like did they almost win or they got set they made they got second something like that but that shit was like the energy in that building was i never felt anything like it in my life absolutely insane just nuts yeah, no way I'm finishing that. Those were so hefty after once I got them like in the bun and shit. I didn't think they'd be, I thought I'd be able to dominate, but there's absolutely no way. The sausages are huge. Also being over full in nice hot weather is just something so, I hate it. I hate that feeling of being like super full and it's like right, right nice out. Right, nice. Oh, that was so Canadian right there. Jeez. Jesus Christ. Fucking right, bud. You got a bud in there for me, bud? Used to hear that all the time with the games. Hey, bud. You got any buds in there, bud? Can I get a bud, bud? Oh, thanks, bud. And then don't tip me. Those guys were always my favorite. Please never be that guy. The fucking half-cut douche nozzle who usually works some sort of I don't know. <laughs> Let's, I'm not going to get into specifics, but we know who these people are. They are true fucking sports fans. And then it's just like, hey, buddy, buddy, buddy in there, bud. And then just no tip. It's like, 
Thanks, man. Really appreciate it. But they don't understand the concept of the fact that you're tipping for convenience. Anyways, I'm starting to get into a mad rant now, angry me. So that's when I know to leave. Although I would like to start doing podcasts where I really just say how I truly feel about a lot of shit in the world. <laughs> Anyways, till the next one. You know what to do. Eat good, live well, stay true. And also try this uh, Mountain Dew Zero. It's, it's, it is killing it. All right. Later.